All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and we are coming off the back of an earnings week this week. So largely, earnings did better than expected. I've got a nice summary here. You can see in the green, um, green denotes that we were above expectations. The couple of yellows we got here were in line with expectations, and any reds are below expectations. Um, and then by sector, healthcare, consumer staples, minerals, etc., etc., etc. The biggest losers being utilities. But wholly, 65% of the S&P 500 companies have beaten revenue estimates to date for Q2 22, which is the lowest percent since Q2 2020. So better than expected, but not super strong. Um, I don't know. I'll take this. This isn't for, for me. This isn't too bad at all. Remember when they said that you can't buy coffee with Bitcoin? Well, now you can at Costa. And this is thanks to the Lightning Network. So this is huge. One of the biggest criticisms people have of Bitcoin, of course, is that it's too slow or that you can't use it as money and that it's changed to a store of value over time. Um, but as you can see, Bitcoin card, Lightning Network, order done in seconds, and there's your coffee. So. Not only is it a superior store of value and the most secure money and the hardest form of money on the planet, it is also possible to be used as real currency. This is of course made possible by the Lightning Network and the Bitcoin capacity has just hit a new all-time high once more. So expect this trend to continue. Every country will eventually adopt Bitcoin, says the Prince of Serbia. And of course this is true as well. The MVRV Z score shows that Bitcoin is in a generational buying zone right now. And historically, this is indicative of being at a bottom. I want to remind you that the last green candle at the current level was in December of 2021. It took us to 60K from where we are today in just four months. And Bitcoin is printing the largest monthly USDT BTC volume in over a year. The last time volume was this high, Bitcoin went on a massive bull run from 28K to 69K bullish. Paraguay wants to attract Bitcoin miners to use its abundant hydroelectricity. Um, and if you watched the video from a day or two ago, you'll know that I covered the percentage of the mining for Bitcoin that is renewable currently at around 60%. So as we see more and more people start to do this, then that number of 60% will only increase. Bitcoin and crypto users are going to reach 1 billion by 2030 according to boston consulting but i have done videos on this before where i think 1 billion users come significantly before i think by 2030 we're closer to 5 billion users and we should hit 1 billion users by around 2025 ftx in the meantime is about to buy the second biggest south korean crypto exchange bithum so it looks like at this rate ftx is going to swallow up every exchange doesn't it so I don't like that personally, but it is what it is. Um, elsewhere in the world, I feel like I just can't stop seeing this sort of thing. There's civil unrest everywhere. Protests are growing across Ecuador at the moment over a spike in prices for fuel, food, and other basic necessities it's driven by global inflation. So you can see that here. It seems every day I turn on Twitter and, and start looking through it, I just find somewhere else worldwide that is experience in these sort of times at the moment um and then this is true of uh malawi as well in east africa which is same sort of thing civil unrest is broken out because of corruption high cost of living and inflation has hit 23 percent so you can see this again it's um becoming a recurring theme i think And of course, who's to blame for this? Well, millennials are to blame for sky high inflation, according to strategists. The gall of these people, says Edward Snowden. And it's true, they're just going to keep blaming anything and anyone that they can, rather than hold their hands up and tell you that it's the government is allowing too much spending and that spending is ultimately coming from the central banks printing money out of thin air and debasing the currencies. Moving on to great reset news, a green lockdown is likely coming if we don't start to resist these digital IDs which are currently being rolled out and will continue to be rolled out over the remainder of this year. I've got a clip here for you. And the United Nations are joining forces to monitor the carbon effect of your credit card purchases. 
and then you'll hit your carbon max and it'll stop working. Hey, of course it's voluntary for now. The new credit card is called Doconomy. And on the back of the card, it's gonna say, I am taking responsibility for every transaction I make to help protect the planet. This is a social credit score, and it's a proof of concept. The Doconomy CO2 credit card website claims it is the largest initiative ever taken by a bank in educating its users on the impact of consumption. They say themselves they want to set a global standard for carbon calculations. That's the key. Once they have their numbers in place, then they can give every single purchase you make a score and punish you directly. This is what China does. And of course, this will only be enforced on you and me and any businesses that don't go along with their scheme. And banks are going to enforce it. MasterCard. So there you have it. The devil is always in the details. Friends don't let friends enroll in digital IDs. So in Sri Lanka, obviously they're coming off the back of a collapse. The government has gone completely bankrupt. The country has gone completely bankrupt. And now off the back of this bankruptcy, the government has introduced a national fuel pass, a fuel rationing scheme amid the raging economy and crisis and shortage of fuel. So a QR code is given to every national identity card number once the VIN number and other details are verified. So if you want to get fuel, you've got to sign up to this QR code scheme that's linked to your national identity in Sri Lanka. Make no mistake, this is what they want to roll out all around the world. Do not accept it. The fear and greed index, there's still quite a lot of fear in the market. We're at 31, so we're still in fear, out of extreme fear, but still in fear. And this comes at a time when the dumb money confidence is at the very bottom. Whilst dumb money confidence is at its second lowest level since 2000, the only other reading lower than the current one, occurred close to the major bottom on the S&P 500 in 2009. So it's likely that we are at or close to the bottom. The percent of investors anticipating a stronger economy are at record lows. With most investors pessimistic, the max pain trade here is towards the upside. And I was actually saying this last week for Bitcoin. I pulled up a Bitcoin chart. I got one here. I'll just quickly find it. I pulled up a Bitcoin chart and I said, well, I think this is all the way back here. I said, the thing that no one's expecting, everyone was calling for this 12 to 14K region and we could still get down there, make no mistake about that. But I said the max pain thing from here would just be to do this. Um, and so I wonder if that's what's coming. I wonder if a lockout move to force people to chase this higher. I wonder if that's on the cards. Anyway, let's have a look at some charts. We've got Bitcoin here, so we'll just look at Bitcoin for now. Let's turn log scale on. What on earth is that? There we go. So looks like we are breaking out, retesting. So the big question here is, can we hold this and move up towards this final line, um, which would be around 25K? And then the bigger question is, can we break this and move up back into the 30K range? That is where I've long been suspecting we would end up. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time, but we'll see how that goes for now, long and strong. And uh, see what the market can give ethereum is breaking out retesting and um it really needs to break above this doesn't it 1650 ish um rather than fall back underneath this line so falling back underneath this line i think would likely open up moving all the way back down here so we really want to see this hold and then we can get a push up to 2200 and even as high as 2800 in the best case scenario but something like this that'd be 2500 there 2200 there so We'll continue to push, see what we can get. Matic is starting to show what I call egg action rather than tennis ball action. So what am I talking about there? When a tennis ball bounces, it bounces clean up, bounces, bounces. This is starting to look more like an egg where it splats. All right, so we don't want to see that. We want to see tennis ball action. So we want to really, if we're going to go for Matic, we want to go in the next couple of days. Um, so hopefully we can get some tennis ball action out of here. Otherwise, this is going to turn into a splat, isn't it? But continue to hold, continue to push. No risk on that trade personally. The stable coins have found some resistance or support, depending on which way you want to interpret it. Um, we're looking for a push down. So I guess this would technically be resistance to break through. So perhaps that's all that's happening here. Perhaps we found some technical resistance to get through on the way down. Um, but we'll keep an eye on that. I do like this chart increasingly. Bond yields. Let's take a look at bonds. Quickly reset this. Look at this. Are we going to take this low out? Looks like we might. 
So a lot's going to come down to what the Fed says over the next couple of days on the Wednesday. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But this is telling us that growth fears are quite possibly on the cards. The dollar is, as I keep saying, I think we're getting towards the top. I think we're getting closer, but we're still two to three weeks out from a, from a genuine confirmed top, in my opinion. And that's assuming the Fed doesn't decide to blow the economy up and get the dollar super bid. Um, my bias, if you've been watching the channel, you'll know, is that we're going to get a pivot towards September. Potentially, this has got one more run up in it and then we can go. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. But ultimately, I have no idea what the Fed are going to say, just like everyone else doesn't. So I have to wait and, to, wait and see what they say. And then we can try to deal with it as it comes. Gold, this isn't quite convincing just yet. I think this is the best shot we've had. Um, but given that it's FOMC, is there going to be some scam wicks? Are we going to make a double bottom before we can go? This is why I like to wait for confirmation. It's why I don't take on weekend risk. This is an absolutely brilliant example of why I'm always saying, oh, I'm not going to take any positions on a Friday. Um, looked like it was going to break out here at some point, but it just hasn't. So technically, we haven't bottomed yet. So I'm going to keep monitoring this. Um, a break above either of these trend lines, and I'll take that as a confirmation of a swing low in play. And then that should hopefully be able to open up a decent trade. So whether it comes from here, whether it comes from here or here, I don't know, but I think we're getting very close to a to an absolutely ripping rally from gold and the precious metals that takes us to new highs. And it's not just me. Bob Lucas, the cycle king, has said he remains convinced gold is on the verge of an explosive multi-cycle rally that would take it towards 3k by mid to late of next year. Um, and I tend to agree with this. I don't see why I don't see a fundamental reason why this would break down here. So, but of course, I have to be open to being wrong. The price is ultimately what is going to tell me whether I'm right or wrong. So, um, I'll continue to track the price, look for breakouts, and see if we can put some trades on next week, potentially after FOMC. If gold can convince me it's formed a bottom, then I'm going to be playing the silver miners, possibly silver as well. Um, or I think most likely I might play spot gold silver miners and one of the junior miners perhaps for gold one of these maybe so the trade for this is ultimately going to be the same as the jd sports and the nasdaq trade so for me it would come something like this and then let's find the downtrend i wonder if we have broken out retested and resumed something like this right so downtrend, breakout retest, resumption, and now hopefully consolidation under this horizontal before we can emerge from it. And as we emerge, that is where I would be happy and grateful to put the long on. Something like this. And then this would be a trade that I would be very interested in holding for a longer term. Trying to push it and really, really get to the top of this range, if not beyond it. So it will have to be, it will be quite a lengthy trade. There will be a lot of chop along the way. Um, but hopefully... Hopefully that's what's setting up. It seems to me that it is. So I'll continue to update on that as and when. Make sure you're subscribed if you want to see all of this, by the way. Um, JD Sports, long and strong. There's not really much to say. I'd like to see it sort of, like I said, tennis ball action, get a little bounce and then go straight away. And then I can take all the risk off of this trade happily and comfortably. Let this one ride. The S&P. The S&P, it's okay, isn't it? It's not too, not too damaging. Got this sort of really steep trend. So I think we need to come out here somewhere. We'll see how that goes. And then the NASDAQ, which I told you I was going to take some risk off coming into the weekend because it's FOMC. So I have taken some risk off. I took a partial profit here. And the remainder of this trade, I'm just going to push to see what I can get. There's going to be a lot of chop from the Fed. If we can get something, something like this play out over the, over the next week, some sort of chop, maybe it's a bit more volatile than that. You get the point. If we can get some sort of chop like this and then we can go, then I'll be more than happy to re-enter on like a bull flag break here or something. Or I say re-enter, put more risk on, add back on a trend line break here. So, And if you're not in now, that would be the setup I would be looking for. So it's entirely up to you. If you found value here today, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video. Um, if you want to get notified about the trades as I as and when I put them on and see how I deal with the markets in real time, make sure the notifications are turned on too. Subscribe if you're not. Follow us on Twitter. And I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. All the best from me. Take care. Cheers. Bye.